So f- from Sacramento, we are really pleased to have um, Jack Mitchell. Thank you, Hamish. Thank you all. I'm really excited to be here this morning. Students, I get to see students. Oh, my job, I, for 22 years, I worked in a theater sort of like this. It was a little bit larger, more of a traditional theater. But I was a theater teacher, and I, thought, I taught theater and stage technology. Um, and in 2007, I moved to the California Department of Education right from the classroom. I had no administrative background. I asked the person who had the job before me, why would they want me up here? And he said, the Department of Education needs teachers. They need people who've been in the classroom, who understand what's happening in the classroom. And so my job at the Department of Education is really to support you to help folks at the Department of Education, that big building that the superintendent presides over, understand what you need and what you as teachers bring to the educational landscape. Um, I want to echo a little bit of what Nancy talked about earlier about uh, you young people um, knowing where you're going. Uh, When I was in high school, I did not think that I would be an actor, and I certainly didn't think that I would be a teacher. And I can guarantee you that many of my teachers never thought that I would be a teacher. If I couldn't handle the student end, how could I handle the teacher end? But life, has, life takes us in different directions, and a lot of things change. I went to a couple of professional actor training programs, after which I went into the theater and, and uh, film industry and worked for 10 years as an actor. Because, and I thought that this would be my career. But at a certain point, it became clear to me that what I was doing as a television actor was not rewarding. It wasn't giving me back what I needed. And so I had an opportunity to go into education, and I did that. And that was the best move that I ever made in my life. The 22 years that I spent in the classroom were some of the best and most rewarding years that I ever had. And those of you who are, t- who are teachers in the room know exactly what I'm talking about. Being able to work with folks, with young people like yourself, is is a really amazing opportunity. Uh, Ten years ago, I went to the Department of Education, and they had just revised career and technical education at the time in 2005, and they moved from six industry areas. This may not be too interesting to you kids, but some of your teachers will want to know this information. They moved from six industry areas to 15 what's called industry sectors. And basically what they did is looked at the California economy and said, where are their jobs? And so they said, well, there are jobs in agriculture, there are jobs in engineering, there are jobs in manufacturing. And for the first time, and I don't know who it was, stood up in the room and said, wait a minute, there are also jobs in the arts. And I'm sure there was some laughter in the room. Jobs in the arts? What are you talking about? Okay. But they added the arts, media, and entertainment industry sector. When I came in 2010, there were 22,000 students enrolled statewide in arts, media, and entertainment. In 2016-17, there were 195,000 students statewide enrolled in arts, media, and entertainment. That's the largest industry sector by far. Agriculture education has 88,000 kids statewide. We have 195,000 kids, kids just like yourselves, who are enrolled in the four pathways that Hamish mentioned earlier. And so our industry sector has grown tremendously. We are the largest by far, and we have the we have one of the larger budgets in terms of facilities. I, I stood in this room when it was full of boxes and the walls were all white and dented and everything else. And uh, Hamish was talking to me about his vision for what this was going to be. And I was sort of like, yeah, right. You know, I don't see that happening. And to be able to come back here uh, nine years later or something like that and be able to walk through the different production studios and see what the kids here at Millennium are learning is really, really exciting to me. So <clears throat> he asked me, Hamish asked me to talk a little bit about uh, visual and performing arts, those courses that get F credit in the UC system, um, and career technical education, the arts, media, and entertainment industry sector. And there is a lot of crossover between the two. Uh, And that crossover causes confusion. The 
instructional standards that I'm going to talk a little bit more about later in the day are very similar between the two. But there's a one major difference, and the major difference is that arts, media, and entertainment programs are designed to prepare kids to go into the arts, media, and entertainment field. I can be a student, uh, as I was a student in high school, taking theater classes and taking music classes, and my goal was not at that time to be an actor or to be a musician. My goal was to, to get that F credit, to get that arts credit that I needed in order to graduate. But, um, but nowadays, what, what's, what's happening now is that, um, that, that F credit is, takes you into college. But what about those kids who want to go into careers in the arts? And many students want to go into careers in the arts right out of high school. There are some of you, I, I saw some hands raised earlier about how many have recording studios or working in recording studios now. You can have recording studios in your garage. A lot of, you know, large recording companies started in somebody's garage. Well, what are we doing to prepare those kids? And I, I try to share a story that brought this all home to me. When I came to the Department of Ed, I thought I was going to be the visual performing arts consultant. But they said, no, 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 you're the arts, media, and entertainment consultant because of your background in industry. You understand how the industry works and you understand the arts. And so um, they, uh, I was in, they put me in charge of arts, media, and entertainment and I began thinking about what is that about? And I thought about my own education. So I went to the University of Washington Professional Actor Training Program. You had to audition to get in. There were only 15 of us accepted. And we studied for four years to get a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. Out of the University of Washington, I went to California Institute of the Arts into their program. In each of these institutions, the teachers were all performing professionals. But they did, very, they did very little to teach us about how, how to, what a career was like in our industry sector. Even though they had that knowledge, they did that work. But what does it take to get a job? So when I came out of CalArts, I had no idea how to get an agent. I had no idea what I could expect to earn if I moved out of Los Angeles. I had no idea what a career path might be. I had no idea what certification or what the union situation might mean to me as an actor. And yet I had been through these professional training programs. And so when I came to the department, one of the things that we, we began working on is what do kids need to know in arts, media, and entertainment? What do you need to know that's going to help you get work? Not just the skills. The skills are important. How to manipulate the board, how to, how to play the notes, how to use your voice and body expressively. But more important than that, almost, especially in a highly competitive area like arts, media, and entertainment, what are the the tricks that I need to know. If, I'm, if I take a job as a union stage manager and I get my union card, that's a positive thing, right? Well, if you're in Los Angeles, it's not always so good because most of the work is non-union work. And once you have a union card, but, and that's something that you can, that you can be taught. Um, and so these career pieces are things that we're, we're working to be sure that arts, media, and entertainment pro programs contain a very solid career component. So as you're in your classes and your teachers are taught relating the content that you're learning to careers, pay close attention to that because that's the thing that's going to give you a leg up. Uh, it's, uh, the arts career, careers in the arts are very competitive. We're in a really good time now because there are many more careers in the arts than there were when I was in school. But the careers in the arts are really competitive. And in order to be the one who gets that job, the more you know, the better off you're going to be. And so understanding all of the different career aspects of your job in arts, media, entertainment, they call it all aspects of the industry. The more you understand all aspects of the industry, the more likely you are to get the job as opposed to that person uh, who's coming out from a pure arts background. And one of the 
one of the things that reasons that that it's important for CTE teachers to be certified and to have industry experience is that is the thing that we're expecting CTE teachers to impart to their kids. What are the things that you learned when you were on the job in the field? Uh, because those are the things that are going to help your kids get the jobs when they leave your classroom. So right now, if you are in a CTE program, you need to have a CTE teaching credential. Now, if you're, how many, how many have a CTE teaching credential? Okay. Um, how many of you have a single subject credential in art, music, theater, and uh, English, and PE at, in, right now in California? Okay. Um, the CTE credential is based on industry experience. It's not based on academic background. You can earn a CTE credential, a fully authorized credential with the state of California with a high school diploma. But you also have to have years of industry experience. Okay? It's like you learned your craft um, in the field. Okay, the things that I went to college and I learned in college and I sat in classrooms, a lot of CTE teachers learn by going into the industry and experiencing it and then bringing that knowledge back into the classroom. So a CTE credential is based on industry experience, 3,000 hours in California. Now, if you're a single subject teacher, don't despair because you really uh, only need about 1,000 hours if you're a single subject teacher. If you have a background in the area that you will be teaching in, so I was a theater teacher and I had degrees in theater, and so I get credit for 1,000 of those 3,000 hours. Um, if you have taught in the field, okay, and so I taught uh, stage technology classes for six or seven years, and so if you've taught in the field, you get credit for another thousand hours of industry experience. But you must have that foundational thousand hours actually working in industry so that you can impart the knowledge that you gain there to the students that you're working with. So that's sort of the difference in credentialing. One is based on academic background, and the other is based on career, um, on industry experience. Um, I think the other primary difference between career technical education and what we call VAPA education, traditional visual performing arts, is, is the uh, inclusion and in most cases focus on technology. Uh, the state is currently revising its, its state standards, and this year for the first time, California added media art standards for media arts. So when the new standards are approved in January 2019, there will be standards for media arts for the first time. In the past, media arts have been embedded in the various disciplines, but now they're going to have standards for media arts. Well, in the arts, media, and entertainment industry sector, media arts has been a foundational component of career technical education in the arts. And in almost every aspect of whether it's music, whether it's visual art, whether it's performing arts, uh, the, um, the, the, um, that industry piece has been, has been foundational. So, I think that uh, it's very important for all of you to explore, to keep your options open, because as I said, when I started out, I had no idea that I would end up working at the California Department of Education. Uh, but explore, keep your options open, and learn as much as you can about the industry, not just the thing that you want to do, but all aspects of the industry, because it's that knowledge that's going to get you the job and very often take you to a job that you'd never even dreamed that you would, would be participating in. And so I appreciate your coming today. This is really an exciting facility. I hope that you enjoy the tours. I mean, we, they are one of eight model uh, arts, media, and entertainment programs around the state, but they are clearly the most highly developed uh, 
production and managerial arts pathway in the state of California. And so you have an opportunity right here in your backyard to see one of the best of the best in terms of high school education and arts, media, and entertainment. So take advantage of that, have a great time, and thanks very much for, for having me.